up everybody it's uh 5 1 p.m 9 july 2018 on our way home from work been awake uh let's see carry the one 15 hours yeah about 15 hours so far uh anyway listen a little bit of housekeeping number one you guys are crazy awesome and uh Miss Aileen's fundraiser for her uh, aggressive breast cancer. Y'all have raised about $2,800 in the last week for her. And to say that I'm blown away and humbled would be the understatement of the century. So thank you very much. That is astounding. And uh, I'm amazed by it. You guys are just super cool. So thank you. If, uh, if you want to, if you feel led by the spirit to donate to this young lady, I'll put a link down in the description. You can click on it and I'm not begging for your money. I'm not trying to twist your arm, but if you feel led by the father to donate to her, I'll put a link down there. Number two piece of housekeeping. Um, we have 11 days left on the campaign for the first run of squid and bear t-shirts. They go from, I think, size small to size 4XL. And um, they got the squid and bear logos and they say ish on the back. That's like uh, when the channel was tiny, little itty bitty channel. That was our inside joke, ish. Everything is ish, which is one of the two ancient Hebrew words for man little uh interesting tie in there so if you'd like to support the channel you can do so with those shirts we make i think it's like three dollars a t-shirt we make on it and we use those things like uh, we use the money from those things to you know support ladies that have aggressive breast cancer and help pay their hospital bills and things like that so uh, if you feel so inclined to purchase a t-shirt you can find them at kung fu taxidermy.com yes that is correct kung fu taxidermy.com i will put the link down in the description so now that we've done all that what are we going to talk about today something that is near and dear to my heart right now i've had a lot of questions on this and i'm tired and i'm tired and i'm thinking about sleep and if i'm thinking about sleep that means we're going to talk about sleep systems right especially for uh bug out purposes bug in you just sleep in your own dang bed man but if you're bugging out what are you taking with you to go sleep with uh you know a lot of people underestimate the importance of sleep 20 hours of being awake 20 hours of wakefulness has the same effect on your um see <laughs> i'm i've been awake too long i'm tired same effect on your cognitive ability and your motor skills as being legally drunk 20 hours without sleep so you know there's all other types of indicators um, that you know you're impaired uh, by lack of sleep less than six hours of sleep a night greatly increases your risk for cancer um, it's just it's a big deal right your wakefulness your alert alertness all that is tied directly to how much sleep you get and you can't really make it up again you can't sleep two hours one night ten hours the next and have the cumulative effect of 12 hours of sleep it doesn't work that way the body's not programmed that way so and in fact if you're at all interested in this and you can withstand a barrage of four letter words I would encourage you to look up, uh, there's a Joe Rogan podcast with Dr. Matt somebody <laughs> about sleep. You can go back in the Joe Rogan episodes and uh, and look. You know what, hold on. I'm going to go look right now. I'll be right back. I'm back. Joe Rogan podcast, the Joe Rogan experience, episode 1109. Dr. Matthew Walker, all about sleep. It's fascinating two hours long of stuff that you would have never never guessed about sleep so why is that important t shut up and get to the point roger that informational density is hard when it's been a long while since you've been asleep so i'll do my best 
And yeah, I trimmed the beard. It'll grow back, believe me. They don't call me bear for nothing, okay? So, what do I bring to sleep with in my bug out system? Well, that depends on the time of year, okay? I have a 10 by 12 tarp that I carry. That's like my go-to. My clothes, my spare clothes are in a wet or a dry bag that basically functions as a pillow because I like having a pillow. All right, and then this time of year, I bring a light cotton blanket. That's it. That's it, and a sleeping pad. It's like a five eighths inch thick closed foam, closed cell foam sleeping pad. That's it, because it's you know 116 degrees in Arklet, Texas, right now. Like it's it's nasty, it's ugly. So this time of year is easy. You don't need much. A blanket, a ground pad of some type, and something to cover you from the rain or the bugs or whatever. Also important to know, I got a. A $20 mosquito net off of Amazon. I don't remember what it was, but it's freaking awesome, man. It's awesome. And it's big. I'm a big dude, and I got plenty of room inside of it. And for summer, and I got it for summer, because some of the bugs around here, you know, you get one on each arm and one on each leg, they'll pick you up and fly away with you. I mean, these things are huge. There was something landed on my chop saw on the shop today. It was the size of my hand. Sitting on top of the chop saw, just... <laughs> Made me kind of want to go, <laughs> what the heck is that? And it got up and flew away. Not the size of a small bird, but it was an insect, you know? So I, I'm not too keen on those things flying all over me when uh, I'm trying to take a nap. So a mosquito net for 20 bucks, highly recommended. Ground pad, whatever whatever man there's a thousand different types the old gi pads are fine are they the best ever no but they're not 300 bucks for a ground pad either um in the winter you can use a fold bring an extra wool blanket with you and use that as a ground pad if you want but it's especially important in the winter not just for comfort but for heat loss that you have something in between you and the ground and a lot of times depending on where i'm operating operationally like an operator i'll find something you know whether it's dried grass or leaves or whatever make a pile of that and then i lay my i fold my tarp in such a way basically i make a triangle with it one side here one side here and then a flap over the top this way and i crawl in the end of it um and i lay the the bottom portion of that tarp shelter that i make over that pile of leaves or pile of grass or whatever and that gives me some insulation and gives me some padding so in the summer it's easy man a light cotton blanket a 10 by 12 tarp and a mosquito net and my uh spare clothes as a pillow that's my sleep system in the summer in the winter that's a whole nother story man and depending on where you are is going to greatly influence how much insulating your insulation you're gonna need Man, I'm tired. I need to hydrate. Stand by. I got the dry mouths. So, my winter loadout, I have a really good, I forget the fill weight on it, but a down sleeping bag it weighs probably five and a half or six pounds I've had it for a while it's just like od green down sleeping bag and it's stupid warm and i sleep hot anyway and by the way in the winter before you go to sleep eat some food if you put food in the machine the furnace stays lit all night and you stay warm if you don't have food in the machine you get cold so you need calories in your body to help you stay warm all night. Okay, but you put some wool socks over the end of your piggies, right? Hop in bed. You know, I got uh, I got that uh, down sleeping bag and a wool blanket, you know, folded up, tripled up as a ground pad, just like a GI blanket. I'm done. I'm good, man. I'm good. And that'll get me down to like 20 degrees. Now, that's plenty, plenty around here. 
in this neck of the woods. Uh, upstate New York, uh, Saskatchewan, you know, the upper peninsula of uh, Michigan, you know, the Dakotas and Minnesota. Everybody from Minnesota kind of talks like this, you know. Up in that neck of the woods, it's not enough. So you need to pack accordingly, but have wool clothes, have a sleeping bag that will, you know, and you may want to look at like the extreme cold weather sleep system that's, depending on where you get it from, you can get it from a surplus store, 100 bucks for all the parts. You can get it new online for 400 bucks for all the parts, but that'll be a bivy sack, a lightweight bag, a heavyweight bag, and a liner. And you can bring all the pieces or some of the pieces or none of the pieces, depending on what you're expecting for your bug out. But it really doesn't have to be overly complicated. Uh, the core of my system is a blanket and a tarp and a ground pad. It's the core of my system. Then if it's really stupid cold or I'm expecting it to be cold, I will bring a sleeping bag. You know, and never, never underestimate the value of the venerable Whoopi. Bring your Whoopi with you, man. That's more of a comfort item. It will keep you warm, but not when it's 20 degrees outside. But the point here is you need something, but you don't need to get all wrapped around the axles with it. And I would highly recommend, once you put together a system, Friday night, Saturday night, whatever, over the weekend, go sleep in it in your backyard before the S hits the fan, right? Just just go take a nap in your backyard. Sleep overnight in it. In the winter and in the summer, because um, those are going to be your two extremes, right? And I'll tell you this right now. In the summer, it's going to be miserable. Uh, if you're anywhere near an area like I am, it's just not enjoyable to sleep outside uh, under most circumstances, especially if you're not acclimated to it. You know, uh, we Americans take uh, air conditioning for granted, most of us. So unless you're acclimated to living outside, working in ambient temperatures, you're probably not going to have a very enjoyable sleep, a very good rest um, in the summer. But you will get something. You need to get something. Because my one of my foundational tenets is the day you have to bug out is going to be one of the worst days of your life. So when you finally do get a chance to, to rest, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get some restorative sleep. So try your systems out beforehand. And then in the winter, pick like a weekend where it's gonna be cold. And the, the beauty here is your house is like 40 feet away or 20 feet away or whatever. Like you might reach a point where you, you just bail out. You're like, screw this, I'm not doing this anymore. It's too hot, it's too cold, it's too whatever. Okay, but now you've learned so go back inside the house, hop on your tablet, get on the Amazon, and get you another piece of gear that'll do the job, right? Or whatever. How can you do it better? How can you do it differently? How can you mitigate the issues that you've discovered from going forth and doing? But that's what I carry for a sleep system. It's not extravagant. Um, one thing that I am thinking about adding would be more in the shelter aspect, but I am thinking about getting like a small pop-up tent just to put in my bedroll that if the weather turns nasty quick like real quick I can pull that thing pop it out and be undercover quickly um, but I think that's going to be more of a, a like to have a nice to have not a must have so sleep systems what do you got tell me what you got down below and um yeah, appreciate y'all. I'm about to pull my driveway. I'm about to go take a nap. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so again, getting back to 10 by 12 tarp. Inside of here is a cotton blanket. That's it. And then we have a wool blanket right here. Oh, look, still got the silica in it. This is a brand new one that will get rolled up in there when I need it uh, this winter. And this is in, I think this is an 80%. Yeah, there you go, you can read it upside down, right? 80% wool, 20% synthetic. So, and we have 
buku of these, but they're all in Oklahoma. So I got this one sent to the Texas house, and it's not light. It's probably four pounds. Um, but I got this one sent to the Texas house that will go in here when I need it. Yeah, I have a ring finger on this hand. It's just down here. And last but not least, I just picked this up and this was like 10 bucks on Amazon. This is a um, pack cover. I was like, I need to get a pack cover for this bag. That is the Condor 72 hour bag. And it's fully loaded and I really don't recommend you get this bag unless you have a long distance bug out. If you have a long distance bug out, get this bag because it's a great bag. But if you don't, you don't need this. You don't need 50 pounds of crap for three days worth of bug out. Three days worth of bug out is like 20 pounds worth of gear. You don't need a 200 mile bag. So, this is just like nylon, right? And it's, you know, elasticized, right? So you just pull this over your pack when it starts to rain. One major fail. Yeah, and it's woodland camo because woodland is the best camo that was ever created. One major fail. Don't silk screen your logo right in the middle of it, dude. Like, that is not... Super Ultra Tactical! Okay, so that's a fail, but you know what'll fix that? A can of spray paint from Salt. But uh, that was like, I want to say $12 on uh, Amazon. So Samuel Tomasello commented, You grow a great garden, Mr. Bear. Why, thank you, Sam. Your uh, comment just popped up as a notification. So these literally just came in the mail today as part of my sleep system and pack system. But I wanted to show you, like literally all I'm carrying right now because it's summer is my tarp, my cotton blankie, which is right there. And then in here, I have uh, all their spare clothes in here. And then in here are lots of things, including my Mosquito net. Can he do it? Can he do it? He sure can. Oh, Gordy, I never gave you your dang shirt. All right, we got to put that in the mail. That's for Gordy from the Arkansas Preparedness Network. There we go. Somewhere in here is a mosquito net. Just take my word for it. So, all right, cool. Bear out. I will put that in the mail. Gordy, you never even reminded me, dude. Now I feel terrible. Look, this cost me 25 cents, dude. A whole 25 cents. You got to support your balls.